Good evening from a very noisy, very wet, very take a look for yourself. So this will be a short video unless it stops raining. Bye. And good morning from a substantially drier than last night, Peterborough. Um, so, as you will have seen from the snippet of video already, we had an absolutely torrential downpour last night. Um, half the city was flooded with surface water flooding because the uh, drains just can't cope. Um, we're fairly lucky, we're up a two metre hill here, which is quite a lot of elevation for Peterborough. Uh, so we weren't affected other than what you saw in the video. But what I wanted to know was whether this would make any difference to the pond parameters. As it's Saturday, um, we're still checking them all because we, you know, obviously the um, media is still maturing and we'd had a couple of spikes, actually it's two weeks ago now that we had a spike in the nitrite. Um, so checking regularly and I'm just doing the parameters. Um, what I wanted to know was the amount of water that comes in to uh, the pond with the rain, which as I said was, was pretty torrential, and how much mixing there is of that rain with the water that's already in the pond. Given that the skimmer takes water from the surface, so there might not actually be that much mixing. So the best way of doing this, I thought, was, is, was just to have a look at the parameters and see if particularly pH has changed. Now our natural pH of our water, we've had a 7.5 but it's pretty much 8, so very slightly alkaline, and rainwater is acid. Now we do have buffer, which will soak up, uh, that's, so that's your KH test, which will soak up any excesses of um, acid or base, i.e. alkali, um, up until a point where it gets saturated. So it's it's going to be that buffer means it's actually very similar to sort of what happens in humans is that we is there's a certain amount of regulation of pH. So yeah. Anyway, I thought it would be interesting to see if it was enough to overwhelm the buffer um, and to change the pH. So I'm just checking my um, clock because it's now time to do some readings. So the first ones which we have done already are the pH, and you see that's a lovely green colour. So that is what it should be, um, that's eight. So the rain we had last night, even that amount, and there must have been a good inch, um, has not affected the pH of the pond, which is great. So, and the other one is the KH, as I said. So this is the amount of um, battering from, from either acid or base that the pond can take, and our, our KH has not changed, so the amount of buffer in the system has not changed and it's six which is perfect so um, to read the others the nitrate is ready to read and considering from so over a couple of weeks we've been maturing the media that's pretty pale to me uh, so that's going to read less than 2.5 on the scale which you can probably just about see down there which is great similarly the nitrite which is ready to read as you can see that's move that around again that's lovely and pale so 0.25 maybe so it looks as though we might have actually got over some of the issues or the media is maturing um, we fed the fish more this week than we did last week just because we've been around um, as you've seen we've been introducing them to um, some other foods um, they're getting to like the brown bread um, I, was reading, I was an interesting, well it's half an article, it's behind a paywall, um, which said that fish brains adapt to the amount of stimulation in the environment. So if they have more um, hurdles to overcome, their brains get bigger, which I think is absolutely fascinating. You see koi are fairly pampered, don't have a lot of hurdles to think about. Um, but I just wonder if we, the way we feed them, we can actually sort of give them a bit of challenge. So you know, the feeding by hand, so it's hidden in your hand. Um, we were hiding mealworms on top of the bread yesterday, things like that. And I just wondered, actually, you know, if we can create some genius fish. No, seriously. 
Um, but actually, if you need to provide a little bit of challenge to your fish. Anyway, double check of the uh, timer. So the next one that's ready to read is ammonia. <clears throat> and you see ammonia, beautiful yellow. And oh, let me just get these out of the way. A yellow ammonia is zero. So we haven't had a problem with the ammonia at all since this pond went in, which is great. Um, and it looks like we're not having a problem now. So we can increase the fish, perhaps. Certainly we know that we don't need to worry too much about feeding them. Um, you know, we're not going to overdo it, but they're coping with what we're giving them, which is good news. Um, so that's a definite improvement. Um, the last one I've not talked about is GH. So, and this is actually interesting. This is the one that has changed. So this is our GH, last time I read it, I think was 15 which we know we've got really high water. It's normally about 13 or 14, which you work it out as parts per million. Quoted figure is 232, which it, it, it's equivalent to what's quoted by annual water. But sort of down at 11, 12 today, and again, so that maybe show that there is some mixing of rainwater, but that actually what the amount of, the, the amount of rain we've had doesn't affect, it's not enough to affect the acid base status but actually there is some mixing. So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing I just wanted to check was chloride. As you know, now this, this is pink. Um, it's an instant read and it was read, of, I, I did it about 10 minutes ago. So actually that's been getting more and more pink. Um, not really a tinge uh, this time. So there obviously is a tiny bit in there because it is enough to keep it with the air to go pink, but actually it's, it was, again, 0.1. So the mixing of the rainwater was not enough to drop that, um, but there is a tiny bit by passing. And then finally, I think ready to read, double check, yeah, definitely more than ready, is the phosphate. So if I take the top off this without spilling it, hopefully, and look down, check you can see it. So it's interesting, so it looks darker on the screen than it does on, in real life, but it's probably two which is completely normal for our pond. So, finally, we're talking four weeks, I think we're four weeks in, parameters are equaling off, and it's starting to look a bit healthier, which is lovely news. Um, so relax a bit now, and just a final say hello to the fish. Oh, we're down the other end. Want to come down for you? No, I'm not going to come down. Oh, yep, here they come. Slowly, slowly. Thank you very much. And there we have some happy fish. And me again, couldn't resist it. So I put the camera down and then I thought, but what assumptions am I making about the rainwater? So, I'll test the rainwater. And this is not going to be as long, this is just very quick. It's quite interesting. Um, so to go through, we're not quite ready to read some of them, but you can pretty much see. Nitrate, nitrite, that's gonna be zero. That's nitrate, nitrite. Difficult to read, because it's got a pink label, but you probably see it against white there. Ammonia, zero. Yep, that's, you'd expect that. Um, the interest, general hardness, that's one, which means that rainwater really is as soft, soft water as you can get. Quite interesting. And then, so looking at your KH, which is your buffer, um, for those of, us, of you who haven't, don't know much about what I mean when I say buffer, I only thought I perhaps ought to explain. Um, the pH acid base system is very li like a seesaw, and it's got. Um, chemical reactions which act a bit like a seesaw, but one with a really rusty pivot. So you put in a certain amount of weight on one end, say an acid pH, um, and it takes a certain amount to use up the buffer or to overcome the resistance of the pivot and then to start to tip your seesaw. So that's how it works. As I said, it's just a really rough, rusty pivot on a seesaw. Um, the KH, which is a measure of buffer, and that's really interesting, because that, I mean, that's clear, but that's because, not because we have uh, brown rainwater, we probably do, 
Um, that's because it has, there is no buffer in rainwater at all. Now we took this from the top of one of the water butts. It's the water butt that went in about two weeks ago. Take it off the top so anything organic should have settled. And that's about the cleanest rainwater that we have. Um, I would expect, this is the interesting bit, that if there was much organic matter going in, given that it settles to the bottom, it would increase the acidity of the rain. We hear about acid rain and we know that on the whole there's quite a bit of uh, acid in the rain, although not as bad as, you know, as it was uh, before um, there was the real, uh, before we stopped using so much coal energy, there was so much sulfuric acid uh, being pumped and sulfates being pumped into the air that made sul um, sulfuric acid in the rain. But the pH is nice and yellow, which means that the pH of rain is seven. And I was really surprised about that. Um, just the other side, so the phosphate, that's zero, quite clearly no phosphate in rainwater. And the chlorine, it's interesting because that, again, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but that has a slight tinge of pink. So there is a small amount of chlorine or chloride, I'm presuming it's not chloramine, but there's no way of finding out, um, in the rain that's coming down. So yeah, just say, thought it was interesting because we do make a lot of assumptions. Um, so I would just double check. Thank you. Bye. Well, so it's now late afternoon and we've had a really lovely couple of hours with Martin and Sam and Jacob. So hi to you all um, who came to visit the pond. They're koi keepers down from um, up from North Essex um, and that was really pleasant and this particular hi to Jacob who managed to do the climbing wall without falling off. Hey! Uh, so just a quick summary. So after all the rain we had last night it didn't really appear to appear to have affected the pond, pond parameters much. We're getting there with the filtration. Uh, I did also while I had the chemistry set out, did a quick um, check of our tap water parameters, which, surprise, surprise, lots of chlorine. Um, more surprising, lots of phosphate. So we appear to be taking phosphate out of the system. Um, and also some little bit of nitrate and nitrite, um, but they are potential pollutants that you can get in your water. We looked at rainwater. Um, as I said, not as acidic as I thought, but obviously very, very soft. And then the pond water, where we're getting there, which is all good news. So I'll wrap up now and um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.